Hi, my name's Chris. Welcome to my studio. In this video today, I want to introduce to you the various brushes that I use here in my studio, watercolor brushes. I've been painting seriously for about two years now and um, have been learning a lot about the supplies uh, that work best for me. And I've come across a couple brands that I really like. They're both affordable, but good quality, and they've really worked well for me. So I want to share them with you today. Let's get started. So here you can see the full collection of watercolor brushes that I want to talk about today. I've separated them into three primary groups. We have our rounds here, which are probably considered the mainstay of watercolor brushes. I also have a few flats we see here in a variety of types. And then lastly, I have a couple of what are considered hybrid brushes, really. Uh, they're kind of a combination of a round and a flat. They have different characteristics. So let's start talking about each of these brushes and their qualities, pros and cons, and some of the brands that I really like. Okay, before we can talk a lot about watercolor brushes, it'd be good to get some of the terminology uh, out of the way. And so I went ahead and actually painted a painting, a watercolor painting, of one of my brushes. This is my Princeton uh, Neptune 14 round. And as you can see, I painted a picture of it. So uh, let's talk quickly about the primary parts. Really, the brush is divided into three primary parts, and that is the handle, obviously, the ferrule, and the head, okay? And, but within that, there are a couple subparts, uh, primarily in the head of the brush, we have the tip, which is really an important part of the brush. Uh, the tip, um, you want different kinds of tips depending on the type of brush and the effect that you're looking for. And that tip of the brush, uh, whether or not it can hold a sharp point and that kind of thing, depending on the brush, is really important. So we have the tip, sometimes called the toe. The center of the head is, can be called the belly. Um, it's a part of the of the head of the brush that holds all the water. And so for some brushes you want a really big belly so you can hold lots of water since this is watercolor and the amount of water you can get in the brush is really important. And then lastly in the head of the brush we have what can be called the heel. Not, not everybody uses that terminology but it's just the portion of the head of the brush that's closest to the ferrule. Okay then we have the ferrule and it is what connects the bristles of the brush, of the head of the brush, to the handle. It's really important that this is well made um, so that it doesn't fall apart. And um, good quality brushes are going to have a good quality ferrule. There's some crimp marks here at the bottom, and that's what attaches the ferrule to the wooden, usually wooden, handle of the brush. And so it's important that you have that terminology in your mind as we go forward, because I'm going to be referring to those terms as we go. So quite often when people watch my tutorials, they're asking me which brushes I use. I thought it'd be helpful to go through all of them. I'm going to start with my round brushes and just uh, demonstrate each of them and paint a little bit with them. Uh, I'm going to go from a large size down to a smaller size. Okay, the first brush I want to demonstrate with is my uh, Princeton mop. This is a 5 8 inch round brush, also called a mop, just because of the size. Some people call a mop a quill, but I think technically it's a little different because it doesn't have the quill ferrule. And uh, this is a great brush for large washes because of the large uh, belly in the head of the brush. You can put down uh, really large washes of color and um, and do so really evenly. So for skies and things like that, it's really helpful. Let me move out a little bit so you can see that a bit better. And um, so a mop is, is one of the brushes I really recommend that people have in their studio and use for large washes. Next, I'm moving down to a number 14 round. This is my next smaller brush uh, from the mop down and still a fairly large round brush. And uh, again, this is the Princeton brand. And uh, so again, really the size of the brush and the best size of the brush really depends on the format and size of the painting that you're doing. Obviously, if you're doing a really large painting, then you need really large brushes in order to accommodate um, 
filling those large spaces evenly uh, with as few strokes as possible. So a large brush is really important. But if you're working really small, then you may not be able to use like the mop I was just showing you. It might just not work because you're, you're working in such a small format. So all of this is relative. It is my opinion. You may find that different things work for you and that's just totally fine. But I do like this, uh, I do like this round 14 a lot. And uh, again, this is a Princeton. So the first two brushes I've shown you are Princeton. The first was a Princeton Elite. And the second here is a Princeton Neptune. Now what's the difference? The Neptune brand of Princeton is a squirrel synthetic. Okay, both of these are 100% are th synthetic. They don't have real hair. And, but they are meant to mimic, in this case, a squirrel brush. And in the other case, the Princeton Elite mimics a Kalinsky sable. Kalinsky sables are considered the top of the line of all brushes if you get a natural hair Kalinsky, but they're also very, very expensive. And so many of these companies have gone about uh, to create a synthetic brand that really mimics the natural hair brush. And these both do a really great, great job. I like the Princeton brand. And again, they have the Neptune series, which is more of a squirrel, and the Elite brand, which is more of a uh, Kalinsky Sable or a Sable synthetic. And so these are great brushes. All right, let's go down to my next round brush, and that's going to be uh, this Silver Brush Black Velvet. Now, First of all, let's talk about what happened right here. You can see, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see on this brush right here that the lacquer finish has cracked and fallen off. This is a shame. Um, and the reason that this happened is because I was silly and I left the brush, not even for very long, for just a few minutes, I left it in the water container. And you do really don't want to let the water get up into the wood, which is above the ferrule, above the crimp. In fact, try not to put your brushes in the water, really above the bristles, uh, but try to keep this, uh, the, uh, the wood area, uh, keep it dry. Because if it swells with water, it will eventually crack, especially with this lacquer finish. I really like this silver brand brush, but this is one of the problems. I've had it happen to a couple brushes, completely my fault, not theirs, because I allowed the wood to get wet. Be careful of that. So this, uh, the number's gone, you can't see it, but this is a number 12 silver black velvet brush. All right, I'm just mixing up a, a little phthalo blue um, and just gonna come in here now. The, the belly of the brush is really full of water. It's really soaking wet. And um, you can see that this brush, you could go a long ways of painting with this and laying down a lot of water and it just doesn't, doesn't stop putting out the, the pigment in water. It just really holds water really well and paints a really nice, long, even, beautiful wash with that. Now again, this is particularly a, a uh, characteristic of the squirrel synthetic. Um, of, the, of the squirrel kind of brush. Now this, the silver brush, black velvet, is actually a mix or a blend of synthetic squirrel and real squirrel. And so unlike the Princeton's, which I showed you before, this has real, real fibers in it, real squirrel hair fibers. And many people love this brand because of that. It really gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you um, the natural qualities of the Squirrel, which is a very, very soft brush. And it also gives you, though, some of the durability of the synthetic fibers that are in there. And so that's why this is such a popular brand. Again, Silver Brush Black Velvet, and this is the number 12. Uh, most commonly used brush that I use is that number 12 uh, Black Velvet, love it. And this here is a number eight Silver Black Velvet. Another one of the brushes I probably use the most. I don't tend to work really large in my paintings, and so I don't really have a need for super large brushes. Um, and this eight is a really great brush, along with the 12 I just showed you. I haven't been able to get my hands on a 10 yet, um, but I'd like that number in between those two as well. Okay, moving down through my uh, round brushes. And I have a number six. This is back to the Princeton Neptune. Uh, I believe the Neptune's the Princeton brush line is a little less expensive than the uh, silver black velvets. 
And I do just see I have a mix between the two, but those are the two primary brands that I like to use and have, have continued using. And again, so this is a Princeton Neptune. This is again a 100% synthetic, mimics a, a squirrel uh, fiber. And um, so because it's synthetic, it's going to be a little stiffer than the uh, blend brush that I was just using and uh, because it's 100% it's synthetic. Now what do I mean by that? Well, one of the things you want a good brush to do is, is when, you, um, when you bend the brush like this, and you kind of put your finger on it and kind of bend it like that, it should snap right back. You can see, hopefully you can see that this brush is doing that. Now the stiffer the brush, the more it's going to do that. You really want to blend, or I guess it should say a, a balance between uh, softness and, and stiffness. I, I don't like them too stiff, uh, but I also sometimes some brushes that are too soft and uh, real 100% squirrel brushes are very soft. Sometimes they're hard to use because they, and I'll show you an example of that a little later in the video. But, uh, but this is again 100% synthetic and so it's a little bit firmer um, and bounces back really, really nicely. Now, again, these are all uh, my opinions and um, different people like brushes and get used to brushes of a different quality, uh, a different softness versus firmness and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I like, I like this brush a lot. Again, the Princeton Neptune number no. six round. And let me talk a little bit about when we know something's a round brush, okay? Uh, we can see right here that the ferrule at the end is 100% uh, completely round brush. Let me zoom in. If we look at this brush up here at the end of the ferrule, right near the heel of the bristles of the head of the brush, we're going to see that that's completely round. Other brushes, I'll show you in a little bit, are flat at that point. And so, uh, again, uh, it doesn't just it isn't just about the shape of the brush bristles, but really more importantly, the shape of the end of the ferrule. All right, making our way down through the different size brushes now. This is again is a round. This is a silver, black velvet, uh, number one script. A script, there's different names for a, br a brush like this. Uh, some people call it a rigger. Some people call it a script. Some people call it a liner. And so any one of those uh, names could be used really interchangeably. Script, liner, or rigger. I think rigger is the name that I hear most often used. Now, you can... Um, Typically, this kind of brush is really used primarily at the tip only. Uh, you fill it with water and then and, and pigment and just create nice, beautiful, consistent lines. And depending on the size of the brush, again, this is a one, so it's a very fine line, you can create some really, uh, some really nice, consistent lines like that. You don't tend to take this brush and put it on its side like you do some other brushes because it's just a little difficult to use that way. It doesn't really work very well. So it's really meant as a liner or a script or a rigger. This particular brush is again a silver black velvet and that's a number one. The last round brush that I'm going to show you is a uh, zero, also a script liner or, or also known as a rigger. And this is actually a different brand altogether. This is a Blick Master Stroke Golden Taclon. And I just threw it in here. I don't tend to use it a lot, um, but it's an even th thinner um, brush uh, as far as a liner. It's a number zero. And we can see the really fine detail that I could get there at the lining. Now, what is Golden Taclon? Golden Taclon is a synthetic polyester uh, kind of uh, fiber and it's got a golden color to it and it's used to mimic uh, again a, a Kalinske sable but again because it's 100% synthetic with no mixture of real fibers in it, it tends to be a little bit more um, a little less soft and a little bit more uh, firm than the uh, silver black velvet that I showed you earlier. All right, that's it for the uh, round brushes in my collection. Let's take a look at the flat brushes. All right, flat brushes. Again, we can see the characteristics of those flat brushes. We have here 
Uh, the ferrule shape here is, is completely flat. You can see that if I can hold it sideways. And um, that's really what makes a flat brush is the shape of the ferrule. And um, also then, of course, the uh, brushes tend to be flat along the front, but that's not always the case. So as I was saying earlier, when you identify a flat blush, brush, it's more about the flatness of the ferrule here up um, near, the bris near where the bristles start and less about the shape of the, of the hairs themselves. Because, for example, this is also a flat brush right here, one of the ones I'm going to show you. But it has, it's called an angle shader, and the brushes here are angled, the bristles, okay? And um, so it's, it's, uh, it's not necessarily flat across the top of the bristles. However, the ferrule here at the end is flat. All right, the first flat blush brush I'm going to show you is the Princeton Neptune. So again, this is a 100% synthetic, made to mimic squirrel hair. And uh, it's a, as a flat brush, as with all flat brushes. Um, they don't tend to hold quite as much water um, because the belly here of the brush is just not quite as big as it is with a round brush. And so that's the real advantage of a round brush is the ability in that belly to hold a lot of water. Also, I have a tendency to notice uh, that with these flat brushes, from time to time, um, they tend to drop a bunch of pigment all in one spot like that when you pull them away from the paper. You're moving along there and you pick it up and it just drops a bunch. Now that is not the case typically with the round brushes. So that there was a three quarter inch Princeton Neptune flat. My next flat brush is this Princeton Neptune uh, half inch flat. And uh, it's, it's similar, you know, again, you can see it kind of, it just doesn't seem to hold quite as much water as the other brushes I was using before. Uh, and so uh, probably one of the main reasons why I don't tend to use the flat brushes as much is for that very reason. They don't seem to hold the same amount of water. Two more flat brushes uh, that are in my collection. First, I already showed it to you, but it's this, uh, Blick Master Stroke Golden Taclon Angular Shader. Okay, and again, it's a flat brush. We know that because the ferrule is flat here, but it's uh, got an angle here to the end of the bristles. And as its name implies, it is a great for shading. So if you were uh, like to use the technique of glazing, where you put down different layers of um, paint after one after the other, allowing them to dry in between, you can get some nice glazing techniques. And this it can just come in and allow you to place in uh, areas of shading. It obviously creates a nice, very hard edge, okay? Just because it's a, a fairly straight a set of bristles, uh, unlike the round brushes. And, um, and for that reason, some people uh, like them, some people don't. Uh, again, uh, you can always come back in and soften those edges, but a little bit harder when you have this angled hard edge uh, brush. My last brush in my collection is, uh, again, this Princeton Elite Series. So this uh, is meant to, it is 100% is synthetic, but it's meant to uh, mimic a Kalinske Sable. And this is a one quarter inch flat brush. It has a fairly long bristle body here. The head of the brush is fairly long compared to others. And again, that would be done entirely to allow it to hold more water. Again, one of the difficulties of these flat brushes, sometimes they don't hold as much. But as we can see here, this particular brush, because it has a little bit bigger body, uh, is holding water quite nicely across the page. So understanding kind of the science of brushes and, and the different parts, like I said earlier, uh, and that's why I went over the anatomy to start with, is that if we understand the different parts of the brush and what those parts are designed to do, it helps us choose brushes properly for the different techniques that we want to use in our paintings. Okay, the last two brushes I want to talk about in this video are both by Silver Brush brand. Uh, the silver black velvet above here is an oval. Okay, it's also called a cat's tongue. Let's look at that a lot more closely. The cat's tongue is kind of a hybrid brush. Okay, and both of these brushes are actually, in the sense that they, they could be considered a flat brush because you see the ferrule here is flat down at the end of the ferrule. However, the uh, brush has uh, bristles have a much more of a round 
uh, quality to them, more similar to a round brush. They come to somewhat of a point and uh, they have a very big belly here that holds a lot of water. So it's a hybrid between a round brush and a flat brush uh, for different reasons. Okay, These, This is used a lot uh, in, in washes because it holds a lot of water, but it also has some unique qualities. Let's take a look at it. I think those unique qualities, again, come from the fact of the, its unique shape. Because um, when you fill it with water here, you can get, especially if you hold it a certain way, you can get a fairly thin line, right? As you can with pretty much any uh, round brush that has a good tip on it. Um, but, of course, you can go from that round, you can really uh, lay it down and um, and get a, a bigger wash. Now, as we're seeing here, maybe I didn't have enough water in there initially um, because it, it wasn't really uh, putting down a lot of water. Okay, so we'll do that again. We go from a thin line to a thick uh, wash uh, and then back to a thin and then really thick. And again, I, I added more water or I really started with more water in the brush this time, so it's doing a little bit better job and um, not running out of pigment. And that's really, again, when you're working in watercolor, you need to work quickly. You're worried about um, not having hard edges or uh, line, uh, different uh, brush strokes showing in your work. And so you really want a brush that holds a lot of water, um, typically. So, yeah. And so th this does a pretty good job with, with that. And you can see uh, what it's doing there. Okay. So that's a silver black velvet again. It's a three quarter inch oval. And I don't use it tons. Um, I think because I've really gotten used to using, uh, using rounds really primarily as the primary brushes that I use. But I like experimenting with this and it's a nice brush. Again, it's a mix between real squirrel and synthetic squirrel. All right, the very last brush that I wanna talk about is also a silver brush brand. However, it's not the black velvet brand. I think this actually might be a little bit older brush. It's just called a sky wash. The number is 5619S. It's a one inch. That one inch is actually the measurement across the ferrule here because as you can see the brush bristles are, qu are quite a bit bigger than one inch across. Um, but whenever you see that number, especially on these flat brushes, that does represent the uh, the distance across the ferrule here at the end. Uh, it's called a sky wash because it's quite often used as uh, creating a wash of sky, sky color. And so again, I'm gonna wanna really fill the brush up with pigment and um, water and just really soak it. And uh, if I do that well, then I can come in and create a big wash area with this brush and uh, just create some beautiful effects. And we see just a really nice large brush. Now, one thing I want to notice here, have you noticed, is again, this is a mixture of real squirrel and um, synthetic, but because it's got real squirrel in it, it's pretty soft. And you see, when, you, when I use the brush, uh, the brush bristles don't really snap back to straight, right? They can kind of bend over like that and, um, and stay in that position. And some people find that difficult to use, okay, because they come back and they really uh, want to have that brush snap back into its normal shape. But with any time you have a squirrel in the mix, it's going to be pretty soft and it may not always snap back into shape like you expect it to. Okay, I hope you found this video to be helpful. It's just a quick overview of all the brushes in my studio that I use the most. If I actually was asked what two or three brushes would you choose if you only could have that many brushes, this is what I would choose. Okay, I had a hard time uh, narrowing it down to just three, so I chose four. I would say the brush I probably use the most, and it shows it because it's kind of worn here, is this uh, silver black velvet number 12. Uh, this is a great brush all around. It's the right size for me and the way I work. I need to then go a little smaller than that typically, and so I'll have this eight, also silver black velvet. Love these uh, silver black velvet brushes. That's a number eight. I often end up using a rigger of some kind or a liner near the end of the painting if I want to get in and get details. So I'd probably say this would be number three. Uh, would be a, um, a black velvet, maybe number one. And if I could get four, I might want to have a mop um, because there are times when I want to work larger and the mop just allows me to put down larger 
uh, areas of paint and do it really evenly and get a nice wash. I hope you like this video. If so, and found it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and uh, hit the like button if you like the video. Maybe even uh, hit the notification bell to stay notified of my next videos. Thanks and have a great day.